Oh, yo, ho, 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 ho. damn, damn, the older, oh shit, damn, damn. One Piece chapter seven ninety nine. Damn. Damn. <coughs> Damn. I was calling this shit a straw hat alliance. I was calling this shit a straw hat alliance. <coughs> I didn't know this was going to be a straw hat alliance. Damn. Damn, this is huge. Damn. Damn. I have, damn. I'm, I'm fucking stunned right now. I'm fucking stunned right now. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Damn. Hold on. So let me get this shit straight. Luffy has 5,600 pirates under his command. 5,600 pirates under his command. Holy shit. Holy shit. How many people did Doflamingo have under his control? Because this is the thing, right? That's a lot of fucking men. That's a lot of men. And he's basically, Luffy's got seven officers. Damn. Damn. This chapter just took everything I was expecting and flipped it all the way on his head. Like, when you open up and you got Luffy versus Fujitora, and Luffy gets acknowledged by one of the admirals as saying, you got the strength to back up your words, that lets me know that Rayleigh's training definitely put Luffy on a different level. I'm glad to see that. I'm glad to see it. While we did get confirmation Luffy is not strong enough to take down an admiral, he is strong enough that they got to acknowledge his power. So, I mean, it does say... That Luffy has quite a bit to go. I'm glad that I did get some clarity on that. Okay? I am glad that I got some clarity on it. But, and, and the other thing, I'm glad that the fact that Zoro saw that and thought that he could lock swords like that. It lets me know that Luffy and Zoro, they, not, they, they would still lose to an admiral. But they wouldn't go out like a bitch like how they did on Sayaboy. This time, they might... They might put up a halfway decent fight against a suppressed admiral. Like, Kizaru was highly suppressed. This is just suppressed. If you go from highly suppressed to moderately suppressed to just suppressed, I think if they get a little stronger, they might be able to force an admiral to fight seriously. So, I mean, this is good. This is good. We got some, we got some clarity on that. But Fujitora's words... And the end of this chapter, this is the type of shit that makes me scratch my head. Because the type of shit that Etro Oda likes to do, he likes to set shit up. To where you don't know what's getting ready to happen, you don't know when the other shoe's getting ready to drop. But when he decides to come forward with foreshadowing, you're going to see it. So what we got in this moment is Fujitora says, you got rid of Joker. You got rid of Joker. And because you got rid of Joker, the wrath of the four emperors is about to come down, crashing on your head. We already know that Big Mom is chasing after this dude. We already know that. Luffy said, I'm going to kick your ass when he was on Fishman Island. So we already know that part is coming. We know that Shanks isn't an issue for Luffy. Okay, like Shanks and Luffy, I still feel like Shanks is probably the last person he fights because Shanks was the first person... Who acknowledged him in chapter one. So I think that's going to be part of that ending. Blackbeard and Luffy. They got issues. We know that's coming. And so it just. It, it, it comes down to Kaido. It comes down to Kaido. I mean. that That's, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting. But like. Here's the thing. When Luffy has that many people. With all these long lines of ships. That stretch him for three miles. At his beck and call. Luffy's at Warlord in terms of status, okay? And the reason I say that is like Crocodile had like a whole network of, 
Uh, not CP9, that's the world government. The, uh, shit, what was Crocodile's people? The Baroque Works. You know, Luffy has some shit like that now. Like, you got, like, the main straw hats. Like, 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 th that's, like, his second tier. Third tier are the leaders of each of the different crews that he has. Like, Leo and all of them, right? Bartomello, Cavendish, all these dudes. That's his third tier. And then fourth tier are all their individual fighters. Like, Luffy is on some Don Corleone shit at this point. I, ooh, I don't know where this is going, but I can say this, Luffy running around with the ragtag team of Straw Hats, while they are formidable, they're all very strong, if you go back to what happened uh, when they tried to save Nico Robin, right, if you go back to my chapter reviews around then, and if you go back to some of the ones before that, I kept saying Luffy's crew at the size it is, that shit ain't gonna cut it. Like, I don't know much about One Piece, but now that I'm almost 800 chapters in, I know it sounds fucking crazy, but now that I'm almost 800 chapters in, I can say I feel like I have a good layout of how this world works. But as far back as, like, volume, I think, uh, Water 7 and, uh, Annie's Lobby was probably, like, around volume 41, 42, 43, somewhere around there. And that should be around the time that the Straw Hats... After Nico Robbins says, I want to live and everything. And they fight all these vice admirals and everything. And all these captains and holding their own. Numbers wise, they're outnumbered. <clears throat> they're holding on, but numbers wise, they're outnumbered. And I said back then, I said, man, as this crew is now, it can't work. They, they need allies. And I, I've said this over and over. Eventually, they're going to be where they're on the run. And they need to have different islands they can go back to to hide. By having all these damn people now, they have different crews they can go to. All these crews have their own networks of islands that they operate from. Luffy. This this is this is the thing. Like I know I know that the Yonko, the four emperors, I know that they have their networks of islands that they run. I know that much. I know that, like in the case of Kaido, he had a warlord working for him. <clears throat> but at the same time, Luffy at this point, with 5,600 people, he might be above a seven warlord. And this is something Oda's been building towards for a while. Because Luffy's been making the warlords his bitches as far back as Alabaster. With the exception of Mihawk. If Mihawk wanted to, he could have fucked the whole Straw Hat crew's career up. Like, when, when, when he fucked Zoro up, that told me right there. He fucked Zoro up with a fucking dagger. He could have fucked the Straw Hats up. It's just that they weren't on his radar at the time. This is... Mmm. Mmm. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I don't know. I don't know which. I don't know which direction to take this shit. Like these re these reviews are reactions just as much as they are reviews, and this is more of a reaction because like normally I read the chapter and I get a few moments where I geek out, but for the most part it's just like yo, I can give you a critical review, and while I did make some critical points in this, I'm just fucking stunned. I'm just fucking stunned because <clears throat> at this point, I want to see where Oda takes this. I want to see how big his balls are. Because in this chapter where you have Fujitora saying, you're going to have the wrath of the four emperors on you, that's fine. Luffy has 5,600 fucking people at his beck and call. He can go to war with the four emperors now. Might not be successful because these dudes got multiple islands, don't get me wrong. <coughs> but he got on some guerrilla warfare type tactics shit. He might be able to bring one of these motherfuckers down. This is, and shit, I mean, Law did say their goal is to bring down Kaido. Is this Oda setting the stage for Luffy to take down Kaido? We know Kaido's in the One Piece universe now. 
We've formally seen this motherfucker. This is shit. This is shit. And I mean, like, I'm going to close out with saying this. I'm going to close out with saying this before I get to the chapter question. I do like how Fujitora has echoed something I've been saying for a very long time. Uh, Luffy is changing the way people see pirates. I do like that. Because even Fujitora is just like, shit, they're, they're saying give our princess back. But I don't hear any malicious intent in their, their, their voices. They seem fucking happy. We find out that everyone really knew that uh, Rebecca was really Kraos' uh, daughter. And at least the old generation knew it. So they didn't buy into that lie that was told. I mean, that's all fine and dandy. I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. That's cool. But Fujitora himself hesitated and wondered what Luffy looked like. And I like how Fujitora even tells Luffy, like, hey, man, in battle, you, there's no room for pity. When you fight, you got to stand for something. What do you stand for? Like, how even now, Luffy's learning lessons. And I like how when you just look at Luffy's maturation process as a leader, there's still shit that he has to learn. But even despite all of this shit, Luffy, Luffy is at that point where he has to take that next step in the One Piece world. And <clears throat> I want to close out by saying this with a chapter question. I talked about this. I want to say when we got the flashback with Nico Robin and Nico Olivia. I said that I thought that Oda was building towards the war. And <clears throat> I thought that it was Marine Ford. I thought that Marine Ford was what Oda had built up for that. But at the same time, because of what was on that island, because there's a connection with Dragon and Luffy, there are several connections. Dragon, Luffy, Nico Robin. Dragon, Luffy, Sabo. Because Luffy just took down a Celestial Dragon, or a descendant of one, in Doflamingo, is Oda building towards a bigger war? That's what I want to know. This feels like the setup for a war. Why the fuck else would Luffy need 5,600 fucking pirates? Because when he went to war before, he fought alongside the Whitebeard pirates, but his ass wasn't, he didn't really need to be there. Like, yes, Ace was his brother. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not downplaying that. But even doing those reviews, I kept saying, like, Luffy, this is not your fight. It is, but it isn't. This is, I wonder if Oda had Luffy go through that so when he has to go through a war before, he understands what war brings about and now he has a crew, his core crew to protect on top of other people underneath him. I wonder if that's a learning moment for him for how to not lose another ace. Only this time, the stage is going to be bigger. You're going to have the world government, you're going to have the emperors, you're gonna have <coughs> you're gonna have the revolutionaries. And somewhere in there, Luffy and his crew is gonna be right there. It's gonna be over. I think the one piece might have something to do with that shit that uh Nico Olivia's people discovered. Fuck. Fuck, I'm mind blown right now, man. But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day, guys. Hi.